I hereby call to order this regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. Time is 6.30. First order of business will be to approve the minutes of our last meeting, September 25th. And motion we approve the minutes for September 25th. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three nothing. Alrighty. New business. First up, we have the cannabis update. Yes. So in January of 2022, um, the town signed a host community agreement with Gracious Greens. Um, they wanted to put a recreational marijuana retail establishment um, at 267 Amherst Road in Sunderland. Um, and I've been in discussions with Mr. D'Agostino and he wanted to provide an update on, on the ownership and what their plans are. Wonderful. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. How are you? Good, thanks. Good, good. Well, I, um, as uh, Jeff had mentioned, we had been back before the board uh, some time ago. Subsequent to that host community agreement, we went before the town for a special permit as well. Um, and I know uh, this board has primarily, or I believe maybe entirely switched out since the uh, time that host community agreement was signed. Uh, so we thought it'd be a good time to come back, give you a general update, and maybe even take you through the project a little bit, uh, and then talk a little bit about what we'd like to do for next steps. But, but before I assume that, um, for you, Mr. Chairman, would you like us to give a little bit of an overview of the project? Is that a good place to start? Uh, yeah, a brief one would be great. Yeah, okay, good. I will do it relatively quickly. As Jeff mentioned, this is 267 Amherst. Uh, oh, Jeff, can I uh, share my screen? I'll just get bring up the floor plan and just take the board through it. Mm, maybe. <laughs> okay. We, we had a, we had somebody bomb, so we shut that <laughs> off. Um, I, I uh, you, you can, can you try? Does, yeah, it's saying it's disabled. Oh. Uh, well, um, while you peek around at that, I'll, I can say it verbally. Um, so 267 Amherst Street, if you're familiar with it, um, it's a building uh, that has essentially in the front are two tenants, one on the left, one on the right, and then um, it's a half story. So you have a, a ground level in the front, and then you actually have a ground level in the back, which because it's a two story building, but the ground goes around behind it, if that makes sense, almost like a walkout basement, if you will. Uh, and then you have two tenants in that area as well. So this, um, okay, great, let me try and share this that way I don't have to, uh, are you able to see my screen okay? Yep. Yep. Okay, great. Um, so let me just move like this. Can, all the uh, Zoom stuff goes right over where I need to be. All right. So this is the building we're talking about. Okay. Let's see here. You may be familiar with this building here. Uh, at the bottom left corner. This is the building that we're talking about. The business is going to occupy this left-hand side of the building. Um, a, kind of a rendition of that is right here. So this is the occupied space for the project. And it will be, as you have mentioned, a retail um, or adult use cannabis store. The general flow of the business is this is an entry vested fuel on the end, about the middle of my screen in the yellow area. This is where customers will enter and exit. There's a check in desk. As many of you know, this is for uh, 21 and older. So this is adult use only. Uh, you can't bring children in with you. Like a liquor store, you can bring your child with you, they just can't purchase. In this case, no one under 21 is allowed to enter past the uh, entry vestibule. So security checks their IDs here. They would come in. This is the retail sales floor, which is in green. Um, there's a public restroom here. And then we have the employee break area at the top with a little manager's office, an order fulfillment, and a vault area. This is for um, emergency egress as a secondary means, but primarily this is for shipping and receiving in this area. And then we have the point of sale. So it's a very uh, simple, straightforward retail sales uh, sales floor, much like you would expect to see, I think, quite frankly. 
Um, so that's what the sit the um, excuse me what the floor plan looks like, and that is the location of where it is going to be located. And just for the board's uh, edification, we have a site plan here, and these new windows are killing me, so I apologize. So this is the site plan. If you aren't familiar with it. Um, this a uh, painted divided highway here, meaning there's no physical barrier, but it is separated. The idea being that cars exiting on this side will go to the right, and then cars can enter and exit from the uh, from this entry right here. This is all pre-existing condition. We're not proposing any changes to the site plan to the exterior of this building. This is just an interior outfit. Um, this is all the existing parking that's shared parking at the facility now. Uh, and all that will remain in place. So it's, it's very, very straightforward from the town's perspective. This is just um, an interior remodel for, for all intents and purposes. So let me stop there, Mr. Chairman, if I could, and just see if there's any questions as to the proposed floor plan, location, operation, anything to that effect. Uh, and then we'll get why we're before the board this evening. I'm good. Do you have any? I'm no. no, we're good. Okay, great. So what we're uh, before you tonight, joining me on the phone is uh, Chris Wax, who's one of the owners, um, and then along with John Townsend, and looks like Matt's here. I can't see all the participants in this. Uh, actually, I can stop sharing my screen. There we go. Uh, so we have John Townsend, Matt Townsend, Mark Townsend, and then joining us are Chris Wax and Stephen, who just turned on his camera. Uh, Chris and Stephen are the current owners of uh, Gracious Dreams. Um, they've just uh, had a bunch of events occur over the last couple of years, um, which has led them to need to um, divest from the project, unfortunately. Um, and so we have another client who is joining me, which is John, Matt, and Mark. Uh, they're a Massachusetts family, and I'll give you a little bit of, back of their background. And they would like to take the project over and move it forward. Um, and in our host community agreement, that requires uh, any change of ownership requires the approval of this board, uh, which is why we're before you tonight, is to consider the change in control. Um, just by way of background, and certainly Matt and John and Mark can speak for themselves, but just for efficiency's sake, um, Mark is the dad, Matt and John are the, are the sons. Um, they are from the North Shore of Massachusetts, primarily in Beverly. Um, their family collectively ran Townsend Oil, which is about a hundred year um, company here in Massachusetts. Uh, Mark recently divested from that opportunity um, and sold his shares to the rest of the family. Uh, and they are looking for new opportunities in Massachusetts. So in this case, it would be Mark and his two sons would be taking over the project. Um, and uh, long, like I said, long time Massachusetts business owners and, and obviously residents, they've lived there here their whole lives. So that's really what we're seeking. And I'm happy to just kind of ask the uh, board for any questions they may have of um, who the proposed new owners will be. I, I do think it's important to note that um, Mark and John and Matt will still go through all the state uh, process and vetting and licensing and background checks and. All, all the stuff that would still apply. If there's any questions on the state process, I'm happy to answer them. I just don't want to guess at what the board knows and doesn't know. So uh, if there's any questions on what the state process would entail, um, I'm happy to share that with you. Um, but for the purposes of this board, uh, you would be authorizing uh, Chris and Steven to transfer the ownership to uh, Mark, John, and, and Matt. Um, only question I have is, um, was your plan to have one or more of you, the three of you, be on premises regularly, or is it going to be mostly you stay out on the East Coast and have a, a local manager or managing company or something like that dealing with the day to days? So, Matt and John would be um, overseeing the operation of the business. Um, they actually, well, I, I, I won't speak for you guys, but they're actually looking at moving their office uh, closer to Sunderland so that they can be, um, you know, checking in in the business and participating in that. Certainly, uh, our hope is to have local employment from the Sunderland area to include the general manager and so on and so forth. So, um, that is the current plan, but they can certainly speak to that as well. Great, thank you. I think you touched upon that well, Pete. We do plan on being out in Sunderland, uh, Matt or I, uh, you know, the majority of the time with a GM, a local GM. Great, thank you. You guys have any questions for them? 
Yeah, so I'm still, I was actually on the board last time you came before us, and the last group that was here did plan on being on site. So, I mean, is there any type of, again, keeping with the being on site, are you talking being on site a couple days a month? Are you talking a couple days a week? I think that's an important thing for us to know, what your commitment to being on site is. Yeah, absolutely. I can touch on that. Yeah, no, we're, we're planning on being on site at a, in the beginning of the store. Absolutely. It's, you know, four to five days a week. And once the store is up and running and we have someone, you know, a general manager that we trust in at least two to three days a week being down there. Okay, thank you. Great. Anything else on the board? Okay. Um, Jeff, do you, is this something we should decide today or just uh, think about it and approve it next week kind of thing? It's up to you. Um, if you want to think about it, if, if, you know, if you're not comfortable approving it yet, I would say think about it. You can email me questions. I can, you know, try and get you answers for next week. If you are satisfied um, and are ready to move forward, you can take a vote tonight. Would either of you like more time or are you guys happy with moving forward now? I guess I'd like a little more about the, what the state process is and what the vetting that's done there. I'm, I'm just new to it, that's all. That's yeah. why I'm asking. Someone could just touch on that, that would be great. Um, Pete, can you uh, send us some information on the state vetting process so we have that in front of us? I, or? I, yeah, I have their sure. whole state application. Okay, then, okay. then uh, why don't we do that? We'll, we'll, we'll Put it on the take it, take it, take this week to think about it. Um, I believe we're not going to meet next week because of the holiday, but the week after we'll put on that agenda. That'll give us two weeks to think about it and ask Jeff any questions. If he has any questions, he can pass them along to, to Pete, um, and then we can you know make a final decision uh, in two weeks. Uh, I don't think you guys would necessarily, unless you want to be present for it. I don't think you need to be there for that. Um, it's more just to give us a chance to you know ruminate ourselves. Um, does that work for you? Yeah. Okay. Great. And, and Mr. Chairman, I would say I'm uh, certainly available to the board if an individual member wanted to reach out. Jeff has all my information. Um, I've been doing this since about 2012 here in Massachusetts. I've worked with dozens and dozens of municipalities uh, and, and, and have gone through the process with uh, really across the whole state. So happy to be a resource just to fill in the blanks. Jeff has all of our information. Uh, there's been submitted to the CCC, so on and so forth. It's all public record. So, we're happy to be fully transparent with anything the board needs from us. Uh, but certainly, it could be available to an individual member if they have specific questions and not familiar with the state process. Wonderful. All right, so we'll we'll get the information from Jeff, and if we have any questions, uh, we'll probably send them to you through Jeff, just for public reading rules and regulations. All right. Uh, thank you guys very much for coming. Uh, we appreciate it, and we're uh, excited to you know dive into the information, and we'll let you know in two weeks what we decide. Great. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your time. Thank Absolutely. You so Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Bye. All righty. Next up on our list is Bub's Barbecue um, Oktoberfest. Thank you guys for coming in. Well, long time no see. Yes. Uh, okay, so September was, last year, I think. I think it was a year ago, yeah. Yeah, about a year ago, yeah. Yes, yeah, so we celebrated our year, September 1st, for taking over as new ownership. Wonderful. Um, so what I'm looking to do is get a one-day permit for entertainment at Bub's for the Oktoberfest uh, next Sunday. It is a five small business event <clears throat> that's all coming to Bubs to celebrate Oktoberfest, which has happened at Bubs before. Um, actually, it was 2018, October 8th, which I realized until I did some digging and found it. Um, right now, we have a polka band booked. It's uh, Trooper for Al Hoffenbrau from Waltham, Mass. They're going to be playing from 1 until 5. The event ends at 6. Um, the Chief of Police, uh, Chief Eric, already knows he's heads up. He's aware of parking situations and how we're going to overflow parking to the other side of the lot, and uh, we've done some things with them before like this already. Um, I've got park porta potties booked because I know there was an issue with the septic tank. I talked to SVE engineers in Vermont who installed the tank. It's a 4,000 gallon tank and a 2,000 gallon tank, so 6,000 gallons with a leach field in the back for overflow. Um, they said with porta potties there should be absolutely no issue. As the regulation is, it's Two, was it 2,000 gallons per day for 300, 300 days a year. We're only open 260 days of the year. 
um, without holidays. So I'm hoping that the town will grant me this entertainment license so we can proceed. I've got Amherst Brewing providing steins and the beer for it. Bukarski Sausage in Deerfield is providing the sausage. Uh, Real Pickles is doing the sauerkraut. The new bakery in Amherst is uh, Carefree Bakery. Uh, we talked to her and she's doing the desserts, the German desserts for the event. Um, so it's an all age group. Come in, hang out, we've got games, you know, events going on. So I'm hoping to be granted the, the one day permit at least, and then we can work on the entertainment down the road. Right. Um, so my, my big concern is I see two choices here. We grant the one day permit or we don't grant the one day permit. I mean, there's about as binary as you can get. Um, and I honestly don't like either choice, and I'll tell you why. Um, if we grant the permit, we then, with no notice, have to set a precedent that then any other business in town can come asking for one-day permit, and we've now set ourselves in a position where that's the rule of thumb. We have set it in stone, and that's we try to avoid doing that when I kind of notice. Yeah. We don't have enough time to be able to hear your discussion, think about it, and come back next Monday to vote on it because it's happening before then, yeah. um, which doesn't leave us any time to really come up with a decision. On the other end, if we say no, I don't like saying no to an important business in town. I don't like saying no to five other businesses in the area. I don't like saying no to a whole bunch of people who are excited about the, the event. Yeah. Residents. You know, yeah. it, it's not a great situation either way. Yeah. Um, ideally, when you were planning this, you would have come to us and asked us for the one-day permit months ago, and that would have given us plenty of time to be able to discuss it amongst ourselves, come up with a plan, yeah. come back to you and say, here's our requirements, satisfies your requirements in the next X amount of time, and we'll be happy to grant it to you. Um, we don't have any time for any of that. Um, it's not like the, the event is a new event. It's been on your Facebook page for a while now. We sent you a letter about it. When was that? Month in? Early September, ago? first week in September. So there was time, not a lot, because you didn't come to us in July and say, hey, I'm planning this for October. You came to us four days before ahead of time. Um, so it's, it's not a great position to be put in because, again, I don't feel super comfortable granting a 1A permit without having the time to be able to vet it pro properly. And really, it's partially that I don't like being asked with no notice, but it's also, as I was saying before, it's that what we say to you, we have to say to everyone else. And that's just the way local business works. You, you can't make preferential treatment. You can't say, oh yeah, it's fine with you. And then... Can I ask a question? Yeah. Yes. Um, just, this, just this past weekend, there were hundreds of cars at uh, Mike's Maze. Now, if that's not entertainment in this town, what is? Four or five hours of a polka band playing from noon to five that's that's entertainment yet he grant he's granted all the leeway possible to shoot potato guns to carve pumpkins to have rides for children to have all kinds of parking i'm sure there's not uh there's not uh adequate facilities back there for people to relieve themselves i would ask that you identify yourself if you're going to speak oh, for... my name's al wozniak i Thank you. lived here for a uh, number of years. Thank you. Uh, another point I'd like to make is uh, there is a precedent at Bubs in 2018. The previous owner had a band there. So there is a precedent. So I'll, I'll sort of section so it out. It sounds to me like we're not yeah. playing on a level playing field no. here, at least in my opinion. So a couple things. Number one, and this is the big one for me. Mike Smays didn't come in here asking for a permit, get denied, and then decide to go ahead with, the, with, the, with the things regardless. That is a huge distinction between their situation and your situation. Is that clear? Yeah. So, so that, that's a huge. There, there, mine was, mine yeah, let me finish, please. There's a world of difference between I'm sorry, I didn't need, know I needed to ask for permission, and I asked permission, was said no, and went ahead with it anyways. And that just seems clear. Mike's Maze does not need a live entertainment permit to do what they're doing. Yeah. If they were bringing in a band, they would need a live entertainment permit. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. And my mistake was I misread the law. I thought ticketed pre sale events weren't a entertainment license required, like a private event. So that was my mistake until I got the letter and read it. 
that's when I figured out, uh, I talked to my lawyer, he told me to come in here and talk to you guys first before we did anything else. So I want to make sure that, you know, I was open with it, you know, making sure that we have everything in line for it, we're ready to go, and I understand not making a president or anything like that. I'm just looking for a one day permit to do this event that I've already sold tickets to and have all these other things going on for it with other businesses in the in the town. <clears throat> and to call it off or have to move it or do whatever is going to cause a huge issue with my business and all the other businesses that I'm working with. So I, I would, can I add, Please. even if the select board wanted to issue it, I don't think, I think the Board of Health wouldn't allow it because at least according to what they no, there's only one 2,000 gallon septic system. So I have the blueprints that Steve yeah. signed. That I, I'm not, I'm, I, this <clears> isn't <throat> the Board of Health. <laughs> I don't disagree. I can email them over to the board, and so you guys can see that there's a 6,000 gallon tank, um, well, a 2,000 or 4,000 gallon tank. Because when I talked to Deke, Bob's son, yeah. he said he put it in there so that they could do way more than what they were doing before. They wanted to make it up to like a million dollar sales a year, which I mean, that's, a lot in the year at Bob's, especially when they were closing in the winter and everything like that. So <clears throat> I talked to him and he was kind of confused on the issue because he's like, I made sure I put in a large enough tank so that we could produce a ton of people at one time. So, and then, I mean, Bob's and Tayday was pumping people through nonstop. I mean, they did a, a day where they did 700 or 800 people in a day. Um, and there was, you know, no issues. I know. When I took over well, Bubs, the beer zones hadn't cleaned the tank out for five years. So, and I know they had issues with it, but I think it was just not having maintenance. And I talked to my septic company, and we have a schedule set up for it with the grease trap and the septic itself. It's uh, Gary's, no, Greg's. Greg's in Deerfield, um, who I'm using. And I know they called Steve to find out. And like, I looked on the blueprints to see if there was any discrepancies on like the volume but there's no number in writing on like the capacity of the building versus the septic tank itself. It just says, you know, 2,000 gallons a day or 200 gallons a day for 300 days a year for opening or something like that. But I can send that over to you so you can take a look at it and, and see um, the blueprints and what was installed. He was, uh, Bubs was granted permission. To, uh, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, he had a, uh, uh, a wedding event of some sort not too long ago. No, that was a pro that was a this rehearsal dinner. But but that the was, rehearsal dinner, you had uh, porta potties there. The board of health didn't have a problem with it at that time. No, because we had 160 guests go for a rehearsal dinner, so they had um, uh, they had asked for porta potties. And one of the times when I had asked about having their entertainment license, I was first told porta potties would work, and then I was told no, and then I was told trailer porta potties would work, but the blue ones would. not which doesn't make sense to me because it's pumped out the same way if it's uh, the Steve from the health department, which if it's an aesthetic problem, I mean, I don't see what the issue is with that. I mean, porta potties are porta potties. Aesthetically. Uh, yeah. I, I can't speak to that. That's a board of health thing. Yeah. Um, do you guys have any questions at this point? No, I mean, I'm at the point where it's the board of health that says no and we can't say that the Board of Health is incorrect. You know, we've got the letter from the Board of Health saying... Yeah, but we have information proving them wrong. That's but the problem. The Board of Health needs to evaluate that and make that determination because unfortunately I can't. I'm not, I'm not capable of anything more than looking at this letter that says the design capacity of the system is 2,000 gallons per day. I mean, I, I wasn't there. I don't know what information was presented to the Board of Health. I, I wasn't there. Well, that's what he's been doing for the last few weeks before coming here is wow. clearing the Board of Health. Because Honestly, they're being about a year. I mean, we were met here last year trying to get this correct. figured out. Correct. And I 100% yeah. understand that. And I was here last year also. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I've got this in front of me you know, from March, the end of March, 2023, that says they do not approve it. I've received nothing more from the Board of Health. I don't believe 
Jeff has. I don't believe anyone here has received I anything I more. Because I talked to Steve about him trying to figure things out when he says, that's what it says. And I was like, well, it says different from what I have. That's right. So I've sent him the stuff and he's, you know, the, the blueprints and the contracts, everything's all signed off by him. So having the 2,000 gallons just doesn't make sense to me. So I they don't have a right copy or the missing a page or something, which, I'll, like I said, I'll send over tonight so you guys can all look at it. Price for it. And then, you know, with the extra porta potties and having these events and then having, you know, Greg's come in the day before and clean the sets and making sure it's all set. That's why, you know, I put that plan to the health board and still been denied. So there's almost like no wiggle room. It's basically, that's it. Your chief There's no police calls it BS, no. and he's right. The whole thing is BS. It really is. The health department has incorrect information, which they're passing incorrect information to you. Now, he may not be able to do this because there's incorrect information going around, and I'm asking how fair is all this? Well, again, and that's why, that's why we would want to have more time, ever. is because if we had two, three more weeks, we could have a chance to meet well, the Board of Health. Sure health. We could wait for the Board of Health to get back. I'm speaking, thinking. We could wait for the Board of Health to, re to reply to us. We could do all kinds of things. And you're putting yourself in a position where we either have to make a decision tonight or it doesn't happen. And so we, we can't even call the Board of Health and ask them because we don't have any time to do that. That's, you know, if, if we had been, if you had asked us back in July, this conversation happened in July or even August or even September 15th, after we sent the letter, if, if, if you had come to us then and we had this discussion and you had said, hey, we have evidence that we have more things, great, meet with the Board of Health. We'll meet next week. We'll take the recommendation into consideration at that point. Um, I mean, Crystal's not wrong that even if we agreed in principle, and I'm not saying we do or don't, that you should be granted it because you have the sufficient capacity, it does not our purview to make that decision based on the Board of Health. The Board of Health makes that decision. If the Board of Health sends an email tomorrow morning that says, we were wrong, you're, he was right, he has the capacity, that's an entirely different situation. But we don't have that in front of us. We don't have the, the thing from the Board of Health. Um, I mean, I, I guess the question for the Board would be, if we did have a, a thing in front of us saying that the, the Board of Health has said we were wrong, it's actually 6,000 and, you know, he can move ahead with that, would we still feel comfortable moving forward or are we still feeling like there's not enough time? So that kind of makes it move in one case or the other. So, again, it's a question for Jeff. Are we able to call some type of meeting between the four of us? If, like, say tomorrow morning, we get all the information we need. Are we able to call a meeting and actually make a determination or? Yeah, we would need the information by Wednesday so that we could post. I mean, that was the latest. If we got it Wednesday and posted the meeting, we could have a meeting on Friday. Um, which would be the last time before the event that, that the select board could meet. And we need 48 hours to post, so. And then we need, it, and so again, just to make sure that if something like this happens, how do we determine a fee? How do we, do we have time to determine all of those things also? Do we have time for and I'm just saying, if this showed up tomorrow morning, is there even an avenue for us to proceed forward? It would be hard. You know, I, I would, uh, yeah, we would need to develop the guidelines and the policies like we do for anything else, you know, the one day li liquor license. Right. We need every department to sign off on it before it comes to the select board. We would probably have something similar, I mean, Right, because we don't even have possible? a policy right now for a one-day entertainment well, license. <clears throat> for the 300th, wasn't there music or something going on? I heard there was stuff. I wasn't living in the town at that time. There must have been some kind of permit that got pulled for that to be on the town square. I wasn't here. I, I don't know. None of us were here at that time. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Can't tell you that. Yeah, awesome. um, and, 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 and I get, I get both your point and your point about there being other things in town that may or may not 
have qualified as something that may have been something that should have had a one-day permit. And in all honesty, none of that matters in this situation because we're not sitting here debating the, the, the merits of whether or not you should be granted a one-day permit. We're at this point trying to figure out whether or not it's even possible to grant you a one-day permit with the information we have in front of us and the time we have in front of us. Um, the other conversation is a whole other conversation. But um, So it sounds like there's an outside chance that you guys can get the information you need and the people involved to make a to make a, 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 a decision before Sunday? It, it would have to be everything lining up pretty pretty fantastically. Yeah, um, <laughs> wow. Well, and, and I mean, if, if honestly, if that's going to be your attitude, then I'm not going to bend over backwards and call another no, meeting okay. on Friday about it. You so you claim you weren't here at 300. I've been here 50 years. Hmm. This is this is not the first. And time I've lived I've here for 60. So how long we've right. lived here doesn't really no, matter. But it does when you've done this again and again, and you've been to civil like men's meetings and you've volunteered your ass up in town. It does matter. It does. And when you have a resident that lives in town, he's moved here, wants to start a family. And I think since he started this, he's run into nothing but walls. And I'm not talking about this one event. I'm talking about a lot of other things he's asked to do. And again, we are trying to figure out a way to do this. We truly are. We are not. But we don't. How can we if you look at the time from tonight, even just, and let's, let's really talk reality here, for us to come up with a policy, for us to come up with some type of structure for a one day permit for entertainment, how much that permit is gonna be to get sign offs. We have Board of Health, we have Fire Department, we have police. That's a lot of moving parts to come together. We are actually trying to see if we can do this. And it's very difficult to sit here and, and really... Well, put yourself in, in Andrew's position from Bucks. He's been, he's been handcuffed by the Board of Health for months over this, over this septic system. <clears throat> and now we're before the selectmen and Select you board. don't even have all the information that's available to you. Correct. Because and, this and was I find that troublesome because it, it certainly on the surface sounds as though there's some sort of a, of a vendetta or a discriminatory act going on here that's prohibiting him from earning a decent living. <clears throat> and if you can't build a fire if 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 he can't if he can't square, square, get square with the Board of Health in the months that he's made an attempt to do so, how is the how are the Board of Selectmen going to do it in four days? Correct, and I'm sure. And again, Jeff can probably speak to it much better than I can. We we had no information telling us that he's been having issues with the Board of Health. No one has come to us and said there have been. This, this, this issue between Bob's and the Board of Health. Has anyone come to you, Jeff, and expressed? So there's really no communications between the, the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Health? It, they're totally different the purviews. Meeting, it's totally different purviews. It's the, the, what, what they deal with. If I knew what every single member of every single board in town did, I wouldn't have time for anything else. There's a lot that goes on, and basically the, the, the idea of having separated boards and separated division of duties is so that I don't have to know everything about Board of Health issues. I trust that the Board of Health that's elected by the town and or appointed, I don't even know how they get elected. I trust that they are good at what they're good at and that we're good at what I'm good at. I wouldn't go to them and ask them to make budget decisions because that's not what they spend their nights reading thousands of pages on. That's what we do here. Um, and so it's really just, it's just and, and it, it comes back to what we've been saying all along, which is that if you've been having trouble with the Board of Health, and when you decided to start having this event, you would come to us and said, hey, I've been working with the Board of Health for the last nine months and have not made any progress. This is something I really want to do. Can we work with you on this? Can you help us navigate the Board of Health? Can you help us do that? Jeff's a town administrator. That's his job is to help people in town navigate these things. That's what you, know, you come to us with. This whole thing 
is backwards, where you're coming to us at the very end of the story to say, hey, sorry that it's five days before the event, but I want this thing to be passed, versus coming to us ahead of time and, and getting our help on the situation. And it really, the bottom line is, and this is what Chris was saying, is our hands are pretty tied on this respect because of the time. We don't have the amount of time. It's like if, if you were trying to tell me that tomorrow you want to get on a plane and fly to, to France, but you don't have a, a passport, nothing you're going to do is going to get a passport in 48 hours. We will absolutely keep open the possibility that tomorrow we're going to get an email from the Board of Health saying this is a thing, and Jeff will look into seeing whether or not that's something we can even do. The board has made it clear that we're open to looking into that. Um, but I want it to be clear that if that doesn't happen, it's because of the timing of the whole thing. It's not because of a vendetta from the board against you or anything like that. Um, it is just it is the scenario that it is. Just wanted to. It seems like timing is an issue. I understand that if you postpone the event, there were so that would create headaches for you. Is that a possibility? Because that might give the board of health time. Now that they hear that that you have evidence and the select board knows that you have alternative evidence, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of a way that it yeah. might be able to happen at some point. So I won't be able to postpone it with the ban already being booked and the bakery shop making the desserts already and all the other stuff getting done. Um, okay. So there's no possibility of that. I thought about moving it, but there's no spot in town that I can move it to that would have the same effect of being outside at Bob's. Um, it just has that, that thing with being at Bob's. I mean, it's my event. I talked to Ken at the O's. He said I could go there. The problem is it's you know, the O's. You're inside. You're in the bar. I know he has an entertainment license. Um, so I wish I could say yes, but there's not really a possibility. Um, there's so many moving parts to it. Um, well, in, in the spirit of community and collaboration, um, it's one of the few small businesses in town. And you've heard all the circumstances connected here. Uh, would it even be remotely possible to with modern communication, be able to get some clarification from, from the board of health to okay this. The other aspects, fees, et cetera, et cetera, have, have those handled retroactively. I'm sure, you know, th th there would be uh, no problem in, in satisfying whatever additional requirements are necessary. In the spirit of promoting a small business in town, mm -hmm. uh, we're all locals you know, and um, we would enjoy having this event. I'm sure many, many other people would. It's it's a small town, it's a collaborative thing at this point. I hear what you guys are saying. You have, you know, rules and regulations you gotta follow. But I think, we, can we transcend a, a little bit of that? Uh, in this, I mean, this is, this is a, you know, uh, what's the bumper sticker? Farming friendly. Yeah, that's farming. it. And I think that that's sort of what we're, what we're trying to say is that if we can, if the Board of Health can be satisfied, because that's the one piece that we don't even have the power, it's not even just a question of will, is we don't have the power to say, yeah, the Board of Health is full of it and we're going to override them. We don't have that. Sir, it's not a simple phone call. They have to meet as a yeah. board and make a decision. They have to post the meeting ahead of time. And this is how government runs so that people have access to government. These are the rules. So it's not as simple as a phone call. I will also say that um, when Andrew reached out and said he wanted to meet, I reached out to the Board of Health. I said, has anything changed? And their answer was no. So it's not like we didn't reach out to the Board of Health to see, hey, is everything OK now? Can we move forward? And so we tried to communicate with them. They have not changed their opinion. So I, I guess at this point, I would leave it at it's going to be on you to go after the Board of Health, and if you can get a hold of them tomorrow morning, and you can get them to post a meeting ASAP, and you can get them to meet, and you can get them to okay this by Wednesday, and we can put a thing on the on the meeting, and we can meet, and we can have Jeff write up a, a draft for the the policy and figure out all the fee schedule. We will make it work. That's a lot of ifs, but there is a path, and that is the path. Um, at this point, are you guys comfortable? With that? Yeah, I mean, we need at least two of us, right, to be able to meet Friday. Yeah. I'm available Friday. Are yeah. you available yeah, I, I can, Friday? I can certainly Are make a certain Friday? challenge. Too. Jeff? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I might be going. Is Cindy available Friday? If I, you're not? I, yes. Can you zoom I, in on us? 
Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll figure it out. Are, are, is that? I don't want to speak for the whole board on that, but are you guys no, comfortable yeah, with that? Cool. that I'm, okay. I mean, even as citizens, could we go to the, uh, uh, the chief of police and fire department to have them sign off on something that we could do to take some of the uh, burden? So getting a hold of the chief of police and the fire department are going to be two quite simple things for us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know. Knows yeah. She I guess well you can chief it. I'm, I'm not but sure it, sure until we get the board, board of health, health. Yeah. Yeah. there's there, you know i mean we can find him too right mm -hmm. monday through friday you know he's got a day job so well, i think really the reason we're here is is in support of andrew and to help discover a path forward like you said there's a there's an outside chance and and and, and, and that's what we have to cling to and going forward as well it's, He's, he's, got, uh, he's got a lot of good ideas to grow bugs, and uh, he's, he's actually my, my, my next door neighbor. He's a great guy. Um, he, he's, his plan is to stay here, and I'm here to support him, and that's what we're looking for. We're, we're looking for support from, uh, from the governing bodies here. So. And I do want to assure you that our board, Jeff, the town employees, are all here to try to help you, and so if you need help, reach out to us and that's sort of the takeaway I'd like to take away is that you know the earliest you can involve us in these kind of decisions and these kind of thinkings the more power and time we have to try to help make that happen yeah. um, and that's you know it, right like if you have another one coming like in December or something yeah, let, us know. <laughs> let us know now <laughs> so we can and then this is yeah. a little bit of a squirrel but my, my, you know my, my, my children struggle with the end their homework done and every semester it's the last two weeks is me spending 24 hours a day struggling with them, forcing them to do it. And I keep telling them, you know, if you started this six months ago, it would have been faster, it would have been better. And there comes a time where there is not enough time left in the semester to finish all the work that's left. And every semester that ends up happening and we have to start prioritizing what can we not do because we just can't get to it. Yeah. Um, you know, time is the, the one thing that we can't control in this world, unfortunately. We can't make more of it between yes. now and Sunday. Yeah. That's the problem. I could. I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so since I took over Bob's back on September 1st, mm -hmm. um, I've had some issues with this town with some of the parts, uh, mm -hmm. health department and building department, and then some of the permitting. Um, when I first took over Bob's, I was told that I didn't need to do a fruit permit because it's under the name of Bob's Barbecue Incorporated, which is what I bought. The hub board came in and told me no. Who did? The health department. Okay. And then after he did the inspection, he told me, if I wanted things to get done, don't piss off the town. So that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And then I had to buy a permit for the jukebox that has never had to be done before in any of the owners since Bob's has been there since 79. That juice box is that juice box has been there since 79. It's on the original menu that I have in the, in the shop. And then the building department came in and wrote me a letter saying that they had four years of discrepancies that they never fixed. But if I didn't fix them, they would pull my liquor license. Which I didn't understand that of why in the past four years of them inspecting, why they haven't made those things be fixed at that time. But now it falls on me because I'm a new owner. So in the first, I mean, that was December. So the first four months of me taking over Bubs, it wasn't a great taste in my mouth for the town. And things just, you know, and I tried to be my license. I mean, like I said, we were here last year. We we're trying to go through, we we're trying to mm -hmm. figure it out. And like the porta potty thing kind of just didn't make sense to me. It, it kind of set me off a little bit. And then, you know, we, me and Jeff were talking back and forth, trying to figure it out. And then all of a sudden, it's just like communication died. Um, there's a new pork law in Massachusetts. I'm not sure if you guys have heard about, but my sit, my baby back ribs now are 268 a pound. They're gonna be up to seven dollars a pound because of this new law. So, I, and I, I fully take the, you know, the burden of like, yeah, I screwed up. I should have told you guys earlier, but I did. I thought I, you know, read the law. Correct way, but it was, it was wrong, and I should have spoke up. But between everything else, and now if, you know, I'm worried about this, and then inspections coming up again, and you know, am I have the same issues as I did uh, last year? And then like the tent, the building owner said that the tent had never been up or permitted at Bubs ever. And I looked at him and I go, "What do you mean it's never been up?" He goes, "I've never seen the tent before." I said, "The tent's been up there." Who, who since, that? That's the building, building inspector. And I said, the tent's been here 
forever. I mean, I've got photos in the restaurant, the newspapers from like the 70s, 80s, right. 90s, and I was, it just seems like a new owner takes over and all of a sudden all the faults and everything falls on them immediately. It just kind of like, it, it, I mean, it, it, it kills you a little bit on the inside because you're trying to, you know, make this business that's been there for 44 years, trying to succeed, and, you know, the old owners were tired and done with it. I mean, I get there at 5 a.m., I stoke the smoker, uh, we do old school smoking now. Nothing's made out of electric, nothing's gas, it's all wood that we get from a local farm in Deerfield. And, you know, this, this event is going to be fun, it's going to be interesting. You know, I'm, I'm going to email Steve tonight, send him the documents that he should already have, but hopefully he doesn't, and I will start the process of, you know, getting through it. But I just want to make sure that you guys understand, like, what kind of where I'm coming from with, you know, the different departments in town have, haven't been as welcoming as I was hoping, and, you know, it's easy. We've yeah, been, and I mean, I think, honestly, I think you need to document that and, and turn that over to Jeff so that, you know, it, you, you must know dates and times and people you've talked to and things mm -hmm. like that because if there truly is a problem, I think it really needs to be looked into. And I'm not saying that there is, but... Again, tonight being the first time that we've heard this, it's very hard for me to to even know yeah. what to. T I I don't. I'm not trying to pass it off, and I'm not trying to say you're incorrect. Yeah. I'm just trying to say that this is all blindsiding me. Yeah. So I I don't even know how to respond to you that you've had difficulties or that this 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 and this has happened because. I have no opportunity to inquire about it. And, yeah. and I'm sorry, I know that doesn't help you today, yeah. but it's it, it's very difficult to... Oh, yeah. I mean, for me, it's tough because I've had those two instances, or those few instances with the talent. It's like, all right, if I go to the select board, what are they, are they gonna do the same thing? Are they gonna like just, you know, berate me or do whatever? So at that point, it's just like, all right, push it on the rug, deal with it, work through the issues, and you know, just try and do the day-to-day -day stuff. And, you know, try not to ruffle anything like that. Oh. Hi, I'm Nina <laughs> Garla, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it's kind of giving me upset. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's all right for me. Oh, um, we were so saying? excited to buy Bob's. And it was like a big life thing for us. And we didn't, like, not come to you guys sooner. We were just kept being beat down by everything. Right. And we just wanted to keep our head down. And just make it through it. It was a big deal for us to buy it and put our money into it. And we want to have a family, and it was supposed to be our big thing. But buy both. And everything that happened with the inspectors and everything like that, we decided to just keep our head down and fix what we can and do what we can to keep the business running and go further with it. And it was really hard, and like this not coming to you guys sooner about the light license because we've been working on finding the blueprints and talking to the chief and trying to get as much behind us. So when we came to you guys, that hopefully I understand that we came too late. I do understand that, but we well, we were purposely not coming to you guys. We thought if we got as much behind us as we could with talking to the chief and the and, and unfortunately the chief isn't the final. <laughs> no, I know, but like we. It's, Wanted to make sure we had the parking situation down, and so when if, if we had got questions about anything, we'd have it. That's why we found the blueprints, and we've been talking to the septic people and calling and calling and calling all these people. It's not like we purposely waited and waited and waited. We just wanted to make sure we had everything we needed, but like just having the them not. I don't know, support us through it, like not you guys, but like the other plate bowl. Like we've been fighting with them continuously about so much stuff and we just wanted to keep our heads down and push through as much as we could our first year to get through it because the first year is supposed to be your hardest year. And we're just a young couple that moved here and we're super excited to do it and they and had zero support behind them at all. Like he said, we got there and they're like, oh, years and years and years of discretions. Now it's you guys have to fix it. 
and we tried. We sat there, we went through a list and fixed and fixed and got electricians and this and this and tried to fix everything that had went wrong over years and years and years. And then they still just keep telling us like, nope, not enough, not enough, not enough, not enough. And it's just been continuous. So that is, please talk to me when these things happen because one of the things that, that I hope our inspectors do is go through and say, here's the list, and then you did everything on the list, okay, yeah. <laughs> you're done. Not, here's the first thing on the list, oh, you did that, okay, here's the second thing on the list, okay, you did that. Yeah. So that's what, the 10th thing, I remember, I have no idea how it, I, I, there was no tent permit before, <laughs> it yeah. was never inspected. I know it's been up forever. Mm. I, I have no idea how it happened, I, not how it didn't get inspected, but it, it didn't. It didn't have a permit. Um, and I think, I think one of the challenges, and I don't want to speak for the board, but we're kind of cleaning up other people's messes like you are <laughs> with yeah. the stuff, right? If this was the board, you know, previously, there probably hopefully would have been a tent permitted, you know, those types of things. And, and maybe the electric, the electrical would have been kept up so it wouldn't have fallen to you. So I think that like you, we're trying to make sure that everything is in place and, and moving smoothly. Um, but please, yeah, if there are issues, especially if there are issues like they're not getting inspectors or boards aren't getting back to you in a timely fashion, those are things that I can, hey, Jeff, it's been two weeks, I'm not here. Like, I can push from the inside and say, hey, he's got an event coming up, let's go. Yeah, no, and, and, and the board and Jeff takes complaints very seriously. We've had many discussions many times over you know, the years about the complaints when they come in, we take them very seriously. Um, and really, you know, I can't speak for everyone else on the board, but I, I want to encourage you to do well. I want to do everything, you know, I, I want businesses to, I'm actually the member of the board who's on the, what's the position, the yeah. planning committee, uh, in economic planning, economic, economic development. development. Economic yeah. development, that's what, I'm the economic development committee guy on, on, the, on the board because I want to see businesses come in. As you saw earlier, we, we were excited about having a, a marijuana business come to town. We want to grow the base. <laughs> Why is that? Because so taxes. Because, because just what I said. Because, yeah. because, because taxes. taxes. Because, because it's uh, 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 it's, we won't go on a huge tangent on this, but, but really um, trying to run a town on the money we have to run the town is incredibly hard and has been getting harder for the last like 50 years. Um, and it, it, was, it's was a, there a, a public announcement about that plan? Yeah, it was on, I think, November 21st, 2021. Two years ago. Two yep. years ago. Wow, hang on. Yeah. And again, I'm not, for it's some not reason, that's the date that's, the that's sticking in my head. We, we, yeah. let's, let's not go on this issue, yeah. but, but what I'm trying to say is that we, we are, as a board and as a town, committed to trying to make it work. And from my perspective, the point of the, of the health department and the inspectors is to very clearly define a path for you to get to where they want you to be in order to open up. And if you're not having that experience with them, if they're not being clear about it or if they're moving the goalposts or whatever, absolutely that's something we want to know about because we, we can't do anything if we don't know about it. Yeah. Um, so please do, as I said, document whatever you have, you know, talk to Jeff about that stuff. Um, doesn't help us a whole lot for this situation, but as we've said, we will do everything we can within the, the bounds of the time we have. Um, hopefully the Board of Health is, is amenable and can make things happen on their end. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we, we will keep our end open until we hear back from you and the Board of Health. All right. And I'll reach out to the Board of Health as well. Yeah, and I'll send the blueprints. I'll, do, I'll have you and the Board of Health connected on it so that Perfect. we're all on the same email so that everyone knows what's going on. Thank you. Yep. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for all for coming in. Thank you. Um, and if we need any more communication on this, we will definitely reach out to you about that. Thank you. All righty. Good luck, I hope. Yes. <laughs> All right, next up is old business. We have the complete streets update. Yes. Yeah, take her away. All right, so uh, I think, I think what, last week I said the project was about 78,000. Um, that, that was not right. Um, so we got, we got the estimates 
from the engineer. Um, so, uh, sorry, backing up. The project is to replace the, the sidewalks and the walkway around the elementary school and make sidewalk improvement, uh, crosswalk improvements. Um, so, I don't, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> so, what, what the, the, the estimate we got back was $440,000. So we looked at it um, and it was, originally we had counted there were eight, um, eight crosswalks and we were gonna put signalization. Um, and there were two things. One is we don't need it at all, eight crosswalks. And the second is um, we doubled the price of what those push button crosswalks would be. So still relatively expensive, about $22,000 per um, signalization sign, or for two, one on each side per crosswalk. So I talked to George um, and we reduced the number of crosswalks or we identified the, the top priority crosswalks, which were the two on Old Amherst and South Silver, where they cross, the two crosswalks there. Um, the crosswalk by South, sorry, I said South Silver, South Main, South Silver, and um, then the one across Swampfield, um, Old Amherst and Swampfield. In front of the old school? Right, yeah. in front of the, yeah. Okay. Is it the one crossing the driveway or the one, there's no, there's no crossing of Old Amherst right, right there, is it? No, um, there's no not sidewalk that there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. And with those four, it would I think it would be about a hundred and seventy five thousand. Okay, and this is something we're getting a grant for. Or is this something? Grant yes, grant. we are applying for a grant um, that would pay for the entire it's thing. Yeah, no it's match. part of Complete Streets, yep. which we have um, up to five hundred thousand dollars every four years. Okay. And do you need us to to vote on that, or is it? That yes. So. Um, if, if that's all good, I guess I, w it, you know, it's double the price, so I wanted to make sure that was okay. We sort of prioritized the crosswalks, wanted to make sure that was okay with all of you. Um, and I guess if you w said, hey, I don't think this crosswalk needs it, we can save 22000 there, or... Um, I mean, I guess the are we saving 22000 there if we do that? I mean... Right. So, Probably. yeah. No, I mean... It, and I appreciate the due diligence, and obviously we want to come in as reasonable and as, you know, we want to be good stewards of state money. We don't want to just go blowing it for no reason. That being said, we're well under the 500000 and so I'm perfectly comfortable with moving forward with the one seventy five, especially if it means we're getting some crosswalks that are going to be safer out of it. You know, that's a plus for me. Yeah, I, I would just add that it will impact our ability to get Complete Streets funding for the next three years. So we will... We'll only be able to get three hundred twenty-five thousand. But if we're looking at about this much per year, right? Yep. That probably no. wouldn't be an okay. issue. Um, do either of you have any opinions or questions for Jeff? Well, I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. going to throw in the caveat um, just because I, I went out and looked at it today. And I should have should have meant to go out earlier, um, but I would say on the school site for me, it would make a lot of sense. Uh, you know, there's a shared use path that comes in from South Main. Comes all the way around to the front of the school on the left side, and then um, it, the problem is there's no safe, easy way in for somebody on a bike from the old Amherst side. So if you stop, say you've got the sidewalk going out, but you've got a nice ten foot path from one end, and you've got a sidewalk from the other end. It would be nice if uh, that uh, shared use path on the where it, it ends kind of at the left side of the school. When you come all the way around, you come in from South and you come all the way to the left side. If that could continue along and me walking it, and I'm saying this could this could be something we could put into the grant application. You can actually see it right here. See on the left side where the, the sidewalk comes around the school? Let me just share this. Yeah. Just to clarify, we are talking about putting one at the South Main side of the school. Is that on 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 yeah. Old Amherst? On, on Old Amherst, Old Amherst not on, at the not end. On South Main. 
Old oh, Amherst yeah. and Southgate. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I was just saying that that's, two, you that's want a bit two of priority there, right? for me yeah. since my kids almost got yeah, let's, go, let's, let's, let's start here. Two right there. One right. across, one across. Okay. Those are two. And then... Um, one across Swampfield here. Okay. And then right at the curbish. Right at South Silver, there's another crosswalk. Yeah. Oh. So... so there's a crosswalk there, so then the, the fourth one would go there. It, can you go over to South Main for a second? Yeah. So the, the, the back entrance to the school, yeah. the one that, that comes out on South Main there, mm -hmm. I see kids crossing there all the time. Crossing South Main. Crossing South Main because they're coming, they're walking home or they're, or they're you know, end of day, on the bike to school days, all that. I see tons of kids there. My kids have, have gotten almost run over there multiple times. Um, yeah. We have kids coming who walk from home from school, going up North Main, going over to School Street and whatnot, who just walk, who come out that entrance there. I would love to see a crossing the there. crosswalk there. Yeah, I if mean, that's that, something we can tack on. It's a little tricky. It's a little tricky. I mean, because you got to think about the ADA requirements for the ramps and all that kind of thing with the, with the car. I mean, you can do it. You can do it, but it, it's a little trickier because you're not dealing with an existing kind of crossing that's already set up. You're mm -hmm. starting brand new. And you got to worry about the slopes and where you put it versus driveways. Curb I mean, cuts, I haven't looked, things like I that. I haven't looked at the specific location. I mean, I, you could put something in. I mean, it's it's good to have it a little better to find um, as you get in because you'd want to, you know, have the the concrete you know, exactly all the all the landings and everything to meet ADA requirements. But I totally agree that's probably a good location because there's a long distance between crossings. I mean, you you ones at the light, and the second ones at and, and, hammers, and that's it, and that's thousands of feet. And it's also, a kid gets hit in that yeah, crossing no, there, leaving agree. the school, the town looks real bad. And, and not that it's just such about image, it's also about safety, yeah, obviously. No, I, but I, like, I, you know, I, I can't think of a, a worse scenario than to have a kid get run over there because yep. you don't have good crosswalk there. Yeah, um, I, I, um, I'll say you could, you, we could put something, we've got a day, right? We've got a day left to do this. We could put something in conservatively. <laughs> Yeah, it can happen. I mean, put something in conservatively to, to cover the cost of it, mm -hmm. and then if we can get it done, you know, and then if we get the grant, we can we can make it work. We, I think it, it could work, but it's a little tricky just because of the ramps and it, to determine the location and make sure that you know I haven't haven't had a close enough look at it. Or is it something that for we commit to next year? Well, we could do just as part of chapter ninety. We could do it as you know. Yeah, oh, uh, the, so I think there are two rounds every year. So I think the next round, if we didn't apply in October, would be March. But you, I think you need to complete whatever project you have on the docket before you can reapply. I think Crystal was yeah. saying postpone or no? No. Oh, okay. I'm do this saying and then do, the do next this, one. but commit to so doing that next time around. creating a crossing. A handicap accessible a crossing there with lighting things like that because you know you're talking curb cuts you're things like that right because you've got to you know get down to the road yep. yeah because you have to do something on the other side get right the grass well there then. shouldn't there shouldn't be a curb cut because it's a road, right? It's an access well, road. Right. Yeah, but you got to go right. the other but side. But you got to go to the other side of the you road. Figure out how to do it, which you need right. concrete land. Right, you got to, you know, come up the the so other side of the road. It looks, it looks possible. I mean, it's not coming. It's not hitting the driveway, which makes it makes it easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's the other the, side. You already have the the the, the, the sidewalk on that side yeah. with the curb, you know, with the, the tree belt there, yeah. which is town property already. Yes. Nothing crazy. Um, so it shouldn't be an, an issue of any kind of. You know, easements right, right away it's that. all that yeah. is fine yeah. it's just the it's the actual work of the right but yeah. you know if again and i'm not saying that's the right way to go but i think that's something we can consider for the next time we mm -hmm. apply for this is fixing that swamp field drive so we have time to get yeah real estimates and real dollar amounts mm -hmm. so i think i think i would prefer not to do it that way okay. because my concern would be what else are we doing there and is that enough for them to fund it if we're building a crosswalk that's true that's true because they in i think it was 2017 or 2019 is when they did that 
the walk, right? Um, the trail. And yeah, I, I think that, so I would, I would rather say, hey, this is a part of this bigger project. It's all related and guest debate. Um, and then go back to the state and say, hey, we got it wrong. <laughs> Can you give us a little more? I think I think that... Well, I think if you build it, it could put a contingency in here. And, and, yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah, so I guess what I was thinking was doing that and then the connection yeah, so on me, the other side. Yeah, so let me... This part oh. of the next one. Oh, so, uh, no. You know, breaking it up into a couple pieces, getting the sidewalk done first, right, which is your... Yeah. I mean, Dan, I don't know what your experience is. I, I think, I guess my concern is in when I think of complete streets, the projects that the state really likes is a new sidewalk, a new bike lane. Um, and safe crossings. And it's crossings. Safe. But I feel like they want more than one thing. And yeah. we're not going to be doing okay. anything new anyway. Okay. We're just upgrading the crossings and replacing the asphalt. So I kind of think it's a little shaky project as it is um but i i'm happy to try it however you all think is best i just no i mean i'm just talking out yeah, loud yeah. i'm just you know i mean i i'd like to see it get done sooner rather than later and if we could get it into the bid or into yeah. the proposal for tomorrow even if the number's not perfect and we have to do some fiddling down the line yeah, i mean I, i've done these and i put in contingency i think on top of it yeah, yeah, we usually put the but I just want to get back to the thing. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, sorry, I totally No, it's fine, it's fine, fine. Yeah, on the left side of the school, you see how the Swampfield Drive comes around and comes right out to the parking lot? Yep. So right where it says Swampfield Drive in the front of the school, yep. I'd run a shared use path on this side, on the on the left side of those trees, run it right underneath, pull six feet off each of the trees, and just run it right down and then come right out by the dugout. Oh, I like that. And then, and then, so ten foot, extend that ten foot path all the way down there. And then we're looking at doing the sidewalk anywhere that comes up Swampfield Drive out to Old Amherst. Try to widen that a little bit. Um, it's five. It looks like it gets to six. Mm -hmm. But if, you could, if we could put in to get it to eight, I don't. Th we maybe have a little tough time because there's a little bit of a slope as you go further south or down on the page uh, by the by the field. Like there's a little bit of slope there, so you might not get to eight feet. You might get to six or seven, but if you could do the best you could with it, and then just run it all the way out and run it right out to Old Amherst, and, and then yeah. you'd have a nice continuous path. Yeah. No, then you'd have the crossing up at South Silver. It would kind of make it safer to get to the apartment complexes. Which well, I, I see people all the time walk on the paths, and then they just start walking through the middle of the parking lot because... Yeah, well, and, and the, kid, so the kid on the bike, the kid on the bike coming through there, if, you, if you're not on the... Maybe they go on the sidewalk, but... There's no path like there is the South Main. We should have the same thing going yeah. on Old Amherst. So when you do that, that you'll, you won't lose any of the fields? No, no, no. I walked it through the, the lines. The sidewalk would be outside of where the, it's all painted now. There's blue lines and white lines. Yeah. If you hug the trees, because you're under the trees anyway, so there's no, yeah. the, you know, soccer balls, they're not going in there anyway, but yeah. there's room to do it. I definitely there walked through there. Okay. There's room you can do it all the way down. No, that's something you want to try to add for the... I think, tomorrow. yeah, I think it's an easy add. We've got the items on here. I could, I could certainly work with Jeff tomorrow to make sure we get a number that we feel good with. And it sounds like from Jeff's perspective, if we have a bigger project with more things we're doing and it's, it's a little sexier for the state, that we might have a better chance of having it approved anyway. I think being able to show that you've got, you know, making the bike connection all the Which, way to the and site. They're, all, they're big about bike paths. My, own, my only question also. I had was I wanted to be sure of. Swampfield Drive, it shows it as the road and then it shows it going out back. I just want to be clear that the Com Complete Streets does that for school sites off of outside of right away. That's the only question that, that was unclear to me because that may be a wrinkle. Because um, we're talking about where, where are we, where's the end of the paving or where, where are we doing paving exactly on site? Um, I are we think doing it the, are we doing the drive? We're we doing the drive all the way up to. Not, no, no, no. So I not think doing, it's stopping. It's just, it's just everything on the yeah. from, from the basically the back of the school to the front. I just want to be clear that we can apply for uh, money for on school premises, not within road right away, because it might be tied to road right away. I know Swampfield Drive. I think is a public road. Yeah, but they. I think they did the. Hmm. No, we didn't do. We never did anything on this that I know of. They didn't do the. I don't know. We did all stuff. We did was in right away. So I just want to make sure that we're clear on that before we ship this thing in there. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'm certainly willing to work. You know, I'm yeah, if you don't mind happy to work through the numbers. I think it's just it's like two or three numbers on here that bump up a little bit. 
and we can get to something that's you know three hundred or three and a quarter or whatever it is. I think I think I had it was uh, uh, let's see another eleven grand for unclassified excavation, another twenty six thousand for pavement, and then there's a gravel number that you have to do to put it. In there. So maybe another forty forty five. Yeah, yeah, like it's that. not a lot. Okay. Um. See, yeah, Jeff, please. So. I can't imagine the school objecting, <laughs> but we haven't talked to them about changing the bath or um, adding. I mean, again, I don't think I don't think they're not going. I don't think they're going to object. But I did want to mention that. So can we then? We could. I can ask them tomorrow. We could, but, well, we but could the put it in. Will, we'll, we'll, yeah. Why, why don't we put it in? And then if they, and they object to it, we could. Then we could tweak it. Yeah. Okay. Sculpt it. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, if you don't mind working with Jeff tomorrow to get that done, that would be great. I'd love to see all of that get done. That's all wonderful stuff for the town, um, especially for our students. I'd like to have them to have, you know, good paths and safe paths and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, do you need a, a vote on anything for that, or that was just a discussion? And yeah, no, just I, I will submit the grant. Um, I'm authorized to. So yeah. Okay, great. Um, that's it for complete streets. Then next up, we have select board updates. Um, I don't have anything this week. I this have week. nothing this week. Okay. All right, that is a fast slick board update. <laughs> All right, Count Misery update. Uh, yes, just one um, October 21st is going to be Bulky Waste Recycling Day. We'll have the information on the website, but um, the closest location is the Waitley Transfer Station at 73 Christian Lane. Uh, again, October 21st from 9 a.m. to noon. And then the types of stuff you can bring are all listed on the website. I have so many air conditioners. I'm so excited <laughs> about that. <laughs> I cleaned up my basement. I'm like, wow, I got a lot of air conditioners. Air conditioners <laughs> and computer monitors. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else for you, Jeff? Nope. All right. Anything else from the board before we call it? All right. In that case. I motion we adjourn. Um, uh, we're not meeting next week, right? Just yes. For Correct. the public. Yes, for the public. Uh, we will not be meeting next week because of what will hopefully soon be Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, and then we will be meeting the following Monday, um, which is what's the, the, the 22nd, 20, or the 16th, I think. Oh, 16th. Yeah. 16th. So we will be meeting 16th for our next regular scheduled meeting. Great. Great. And take us out at 742, please. Oh, wait, we didn't vote. <laughs> we have a motion. Uh, we have a second? Second. All right, motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, three nothing, seven forty two.